and the ranking member for holding this hearing. I want to bring some clarity to this hearing because I'm, I appreciate very much Senator Durbin's uh, voice on this issue, but, and, and, and I agree with just about everything he has said, but I want to refocus this back on what this hearing is about. The purpose of this hearing is that there has been a bill filed in the Congress to sanction individuals related to and in the government of Venezuela for human rights violations committed against their own people. There have been people murdered in Venezuela. There have been people detained in Venezuela indefinitely. Even as we speak, Leopoldo Lopez, has, his hearing has once again been indefinitely postponed. There was a young man sodomized in Venezuela by government forces. There have been women that have been threatened. They've been threatened to rape them in Venezuela by government forces and those aligned with the government. What we are talking about here are sanctions against individuals responsible for human rights violations. It is typical in this process to set up these straw men. Oh, we're not going to send boots on the ground. We're not going to sanction the oil industry. The bill we have filed does not do any of that. We have filed a piece of legislation, and the purpose of this hearing is to call attention to human rights violations in Venezuela. And what we are saying is we should sanction human rights violators, who, by the way, happen to be people that travel to the U.S. with impunity, buy properties in the United States, laugh at us along the way, invest in our banks, send their kids to our school. They have zero respect for this government. What I have heard here today in response is we don't want to sanction these people because it might unite them against us. Let me give you a brief bulletin. They are already united against us, other than the fact that when they come here to benefit from our free society on weekends in Miami and then go back and live off their newfound millions and billions that they've stolen from the people of Venezuela. This is not a hearing on oil sanctions. There is no bill before us to sanction oil in Venezuela. This is a bill that we are talking, hopefully going to get to, to sanction human rights violators in Venezuela. What I have heard today is we should not sanction human rights violators because it might disrupt the process that is going on in Venezuela. Well, we sanction human rights violators in Russia. Why, are, why is what's happening in Russia more important than what's happening in Venezuela? We sanction human rights violators all the time, personally, individually. And we have their names. These aren't even hard to find. These people brag about what they're doing in Venezuela. The only difference between those sanctions, those people and others, is they spend their weekends in Miami. They spend their weekends in Florida. Mr. Malinowski, you have in your statement, you talk about Global Vision, which was once an independent television operation within Venezuela that actually covered news. What happened to Global Vision? It was given over to allies of the Maduro regime and the Chavez regime. It is now a propaganda arm of Venezuela. Do you know where they live? You know where they live? They live in Miami. They own a multi-million dollar mansion in Coco Plum in a, in a very exclusive neighborhood in Miami. They drive up and down the streets in their fancy cars. They laugh at you and they laugh at us because they know they can get away with these things. So I guess what I'm asking is, is it now the policy of the United... Let me, let me ask you this. Who in the opposition in Venezuela has asked you not to impose sanctions against human rights violators because it might disrupt the dialogue? Who has asked you not to do that? Either one of you. Who has asked you not to impose sanctions against human rights violators among the opposition in Venezuela? Senator, I I'm just not comfortable sitting here and, and giving you individual names. Members of the mood who are participating in the dialogue have discussed this. Listen, with what us. Just, listen to what you just told me. You're not comfortable telling me their names because you fear for their safety. What kind of dialogue is that? Because what kind of dialogue is that? Or the people that are involved in the dialogue can't tell you what they really believe. That's a fake dialogue. Guys, so is it the policy now of the United States that we will, we will look the, as long as this dialogue is somewhat successful, we're going to forget the human rights violations? So we'll just send a statement to condemn them, but we won't do anything about it. Absolutely not. And I think we've both said that we will, we will speak out, we will make statements, but we will also consider those sanctions. As, as Assistant Secretary Malinowski said, we will keep considering that and we will use those when we think the time is right. So, so there's a so right timing now. element when it comes to human rights violations? In essence, there no, comes a time, time when human rights violations are ripe? There's yeah. a timing element when it comes to the response of a particular tactic on human rights violations, not our condemnation. Give me an example where we have held back on human rights violation sanctions because of timing anywhere else in the world. Give me an, give me an, give me an example of when the U.S. has said, we know you've committed human rights violations, but we're not going to sanction you because we're waiting for something else to happen. Give me an example of when we've done that successfully. Mr. Malinowski, you've been involved in this. 
Um, I mentioned Burma as a case where we've applied sanctions very effectively uh, over, over time. Um, there are still human rights violations going on in Burma, but we have a process. We have a democratic process, a process of dialogue, and in consultation with the opposition, we have not continued to impose additional targeted sanctions over the last couple of years, but remain ready to it. Why did the dialogue happen in Burma? In Burma? Yeah. What was one of the things I'm, that led to the dialogue being successful? As because? I acknowledged a few moments ago, sanctions in that case did. Okay. We had an opposition in Burma that made very, very clear that at that point, um, it was important and useful and effective for the United States. No, but here's one. I agree with what you said. This is not a U.S.-Venezuela issue. This is, a Venezuela. this is for the Venezuelan people to decide what they want to do with the future of their politics. The purpose of our policy here is not to change the government in Venezuela, despite Maduro's claims. We, we, that's, not what we, that's not for us to decide. That's for the people of Venezuela to decide. What we're saying is we have individuals that benefit greatly from the economy of the United States, particularly in my state. They benefit greatly from what they do in this country with our banks, our schools, our businesses. They invest with impunity throughout Florida and the country. These people also happen to be human rights violators or the associates of human rights violators. And all I'm saying is we should sanction them for what they did. Well, this is not about changing the government in Venezuela. That's up for the people of Venezuela to decide. This is about punishing and shaming individuals responsible for human rights violations. And I guess it's to your point, Mr. Malinowski, how, I mean, I, I know your reputation. The first time we met was in a prison in Libya. No, we, weren't, we weren't living there, either one of us. I mean, we met there as we were touring it. Um, but this is what you've dedicated your life to. How, I know you're not here today to argue that we should somehow look the other way on human rights sanctions not. until the appropriate time. I, sanctions serve two purposes in a situation like this. One is accountability, and there are times when we impose sanctions on people who have done horrible things because they have done horrible things and because it's the only thing we can do to make sure that they pay a price. There are other times when we impose sanctions and we determine the timing of the imposition of sanctions because we think there is a chance to make the kind of political progress that will end those human rights violations. Now, and in a country like North Korea, for example, there isn't a scintilla of a chance that I see a political progress that's going to free people from concentration camps. In a situation like that, the role of sanctions is to highlight the problem and to impose accountability. So, I'm In just, Russia, there's, there's no dialogue. There's I know, no but I can't believe that, you're, that your position, given your history, it, it, it is, is that position. the United States must now... So now, our message to the people of Venezuela and to those who have suffered at the hands of these brutal oppressors is, I'm so sorry that you were sodomized by a, by a pipe or by the butt of a, of a rifle, but we think... For the, for the sake of your country, that we're going to hold off shaming the people and sanctioning the people responsible for ordering that because we think there might be some sort of dialogue that may one day allow you to own one newspaper that is free in Venezuela. Or we think there might be a day where you might technically allow them to let you protest somewhere at a time of their choosing and of their way. I did, how can that be our policy? How can the United States not firmly be on the side of people who are, being, who are being violated in this systemic way? I just don't understand how our foreign policy can be about that. We're not asking for sanctions. We're not, we're not calling for an oil embargo or anything of that nature. We are calling on identifying human rights violators in Venezuela, naming them by name, and sanctioning them for what they've done. And I just don't understand how we can sit here and say that the time isn't right to do that. I don't understand how we can say we should wait for some point in the future when the timing might be right to do that because by admission what you're saying is that if the Venezuelan government does certain things over the next few months, that day may never come. And I just don't understand how that could be our foreign policy. Senator Kane. 